Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's discuss probiotics and how they can benefit and treat depression. In fact, a recent meta-analysis was just published and we'll cover the details in a moment, but the high level was that of all the therapies studied, those treatments that included probiotics were found to be the second most effective. So very exciting news in the sense that the 18% the of the population who are suffering from what the World Health Organization has labeled a crisis, depression, seems to have a lot of availability for improvement in the treatment when using or including probiotics. Another reason why I think the probiotic interventions have such favor as you probably already know, when using a pharmaceutical antidepressant, side effects are fairly commonly reported. In fact, anywhere from 40 to 80% of people will report sexual dysfunction, diarrhea, headaches, nausea, sleep issues. It is quite important, I think, to bring to the forefront better therapeutic approaches to treat depression. The model through which I think we can treat depression most effectively involves not only modulation of the brain, but also modulation of the gut-brain access. And this might connect to certain people who notice a degree of food reactivity or at least a correlation between their gastrointestinal symptoms and their mood. I eat something that doesn't agree with me. I feel bloated and I feel maybe foggy, irritable, tired, depressed. That's just one rough example of how people through their lived experience, maybe already associating something in the gut, at least connecting to their depression. Regarding probiotics, one thing that I think is really important for you to be aware of is that probiotics will modulate two areas in the brain that govern depression. One is known as the limbic system. This is a part of the brain that includes a few different brain centers, like the amygdala and the hippocampus, that are responsible for short-term memory, but also for regulation of fear and emotional processing. And thankfully, through some fairly elegant functional MRI studies where we literally scan brains over time whilst being treated with probiotics, it's been documented that in those who are depressed, there's a baseline overactivation of these brain centers. But over time, as people supplement with probiotics for one month, two months, three months, and so on, we actually can witness a reduction in the activation of these brain centers. Now, correspondingly, there's another brain center known as the putamen, and this is part of the basal ganglion. Without getting too into the sort of neuroanatomical weeds, the basal ganglion is important because it's sort of the interconnection highway for many different centers in the brain. And again, we see that in depressed individuals, the activation of this putamen is high. It's apparently high. And other research has shown that probiotics can reduce this overactivation. Stepping back for a moment, there seems to be a theme in depression where centers of the brain are overactive. This perfectly sort of and intuitively correlates with part of the depressive experience, which is ruminant behavior. You keep thinking about negative things in a loop in your mind. And that's literally because centers in the brain are overactive. And thankfully, this is one of the ways through which probiotics have their positive effect is they help correct overactivation of the brain. And by the way, if this has been helpful, please comment and subscribe. This really does help us reach more people who are trying to improve their health. So it, it is uh, quite deeply appreciated. The other component of this, before we get to some protocol specifics, ties into the gut, which is this sort of gut-induced neuroinflammation. There are a number of studies, in fact, even one meta-analysis that found depressed patients have higher levels of zonulin, a marker of leaky gut, and also lipopolysaccharide, which is actually the particle or one of the particles that can leak through a leaky gut. And thankfully, other research meta-analyses that have demonstrated that probiotics can reduce leaky gut. How this in one pathway occurs is when the gut is unhealthy and there's leakage, there's inflammation. The leakage and inflammation can trigger inflammation in the brain. And thankfully, probiotics have been documented to help reduce that. 
So it's not surprising then that a study I'm quite excited about just published a 2024 network meta-analysis looking at 42 randomized control trials in over 13,000 patients looked at probiotics along with a number of antidepressants, tricyclics, SSRIs, SNRIs, ketamine even as another therapeutic intervention. And what they found was when probiotics were added to any other treatment, that ended up being the second most effective treatment for depression. Second only to actually Lexapro. So I I think this meta-analysis partially makes the case that Lexapro might be the most effective and adding a probiotic to any intervention is going to likely make the intervention second in terms of the efficacy. Now, there are data on looking at probiotics as a standalone therapy. I want to come to that in one moment, but there's another finding from this meta-analysis I think is important and that you should know about, which is this, again, very comprehensive network meta-analysis did not find any efficacy for Prozac. So I'm not saying to stop any medication that you're on, but I would check with your doctor, given this most recent data, there does not seem to be a therapeutic signal of benefit for those with depression if they use Prozac. One conclusion or quote from this study, long-term, over eight weeks, probiotic interventions, when administered alongside antidepressants, showed great potential in both efficacy and acceptability for treating adults with major depression. So again, very interesting news. Now coming to the question of how effective are probiotics as a standalone, because many of you probably don't want to use an antidepressant and I would be totally in your corner with that desire. There's limited research here. One trial, again, using probiotics as a standalone intervention did find that probiotics were effective when compared to placebo at one, two, and three months. In fact, from this graph, what you're seeing in this graph, and I'll I'll read through it for those just listening to this, but you're looking at efficacy of a probiotic versus placebo measured at baseline at 30 days, 60 days, and then at 90 days. And what you see is there is a progressive improvement in depression over time, which gets more effective with every consecutive month of use with a probiotic. In this case, they used a soil-based probiotic, specifically bacillus coagulans. Now, full disclosure, there are two other randomized control trials that looked at probiotics as a standalone treatment and did not find efficacy. So the jury here, I feel still to be out. There's one nuance, and the nuance may be that in some of these studies, you see efficacy for the probiotics treating depression if people also have gastrointestinal symptoms and those symptoms are reduced. So said another way, depression seems to correlate directly with gastrointestinal symptoms. If the probiotic intervention is able to quell the GI symptoms, that generally tends to correlate with improvements in depression. So then final point here, how to use probiotics for depression I'll quote from a different meta-analysis. Supplementation is recommended for at least eight weeks with a dosage of over 10 billion CFU per day. And specifically, they're referring to either the use of lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, or a combination of the two in a blend formula. A different meta-analysis also included and commented that soil-based probiotics are effective. And so that's what I have for you listed here. This is our meta protocol, which gives you the high level overview of the different types of probiotics and the dosages to use therein based upon the ranges used in the majority of the randomized control trials. So the lactobacillus and bifidobacterium type, as this study found over 10 billion CFU per day, our range is one to 50 billion and a duration of two to three months. Now you'll see here in our recommendations, there's also this healthy fungus, either Saccharomyces as boulardii or as cerevisiae. These have not been studied in depression. So we can't make any comment on these for depression specifically. So 
this is one type you may want to leave out, at least based upon the evidence we have to date. That may change upon future study. And it's not to say, to my knowledge, that Saccharomyces has been proven ineffective. I just don't feel there have been studies really examining this yet for depression. However, there are data, like I just shared, finding that the other type of probiotic here, the soil-based probiotics or the bacillus, can also be effective. And these are generally used at a dose between 2 to 6 billion per day, again, for 2 to 3 months. So remember, if you have depression, there are great options, especially if you have depression along with gastrointestinal symptoms. This could be reflux. It could be prolonged fullness after eating. There could be diarrhea, constipation, bloating, abdominal pain, just to name a few. And if the probiotics help with those gastrointestinal symptoms, there's a very high likelihood that you'll see a corresponding improvement in your depression. If you're on a medication, again, like this, one of these meta-analyses found, the probiotics seem to make the drugs work much more effectively. Okay, well, I hope this helps. If you have thoughts, please comment. I'd be curious to hear what you think. Otherwise, this is Dr. Ruscio, and I'll talk to you next time.